So America has an amazing track record on implementing fictional characters through different forms of media, specifically within the superhero universes. But they've also been known to clout chase and jump on any good idea that isn't theirs. And for a while, we would always be getting a lower quality version of someone else's idea. But eventually, we all caught on to it, didn't we? Ah. Hi there. I'm What If Miles Morales Was a Loki Variant, and this is a special Halloween retro sick video. Now I was reminded recently that one, there was a Darkstalkers anime that came out in the 1990s, and two, there was also a USA Saturday morning cartoon, toony version of it, that came out around the same time. And the difference between them are night and day. So if you're not familiar with the Darkstalkers series, it started as a gothic 2D fighting game that the Japanese game developer Capcom released in 1994. It was made with the same engine that they did for Street Fighter 2. Perfect! It's actually known in Japan as the Vampire series. And the premise was like uh, uh, cartoony monsters and monster hunters in Mortal Kombat with each other. And that was a fantastic concept if you ask me. But between 1994 and 1997, Capcom released Vampire, Vampire Hunter, and Vampire Savior with the Western releases using Darkstalkers as the title. Mainly an arcade game, it had some versions for the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation to come out around 1996. Now even with a minimal plot, it had lots of cool characters to kind of build a franchise off of. So a comic book and manga series was started along with a four episode OVA. Now this is what I wanted to go into. The OVA anime adaptation was named Night Warriors, Darkstalkers Revenge, AKA Vampire Hunter after the second game in the series, and it released from 1997 to 1998, pretty much after the main series had already ended. It was animated by the production studio Madhouse, and if you're not familiar with Madhouse, they've produced anime like Hunter x Hunter, Death Note, One Punch Man, Perfect Blue, Helsing Ultimate, and Black Lagoon. Madhouse has always been a well-established studio that's capable of putting out quality content that really holds up over time. So it's not surprising that the Night Warriors OVAs still looks good by today's animation standards with that fluid, nostalgic 90s look. The anime version of IMDB, in my opinion, my anime list, has scored the OVAs a 6.6, .6, which means it's pretty average to a lot of hardcore anime watchers who saw it. After scrubbing through the episodes myself, I think I can honestly say that unless you're a big fan of Dark Stalkers or vampire Halloween-y type stuff, you can probably skip it. I'd give it a skip. Skip to my loot. And yet, this average anime is able to hold up better than an American version of it, made in the same decade. Well, why is that? But no, the American TV show, just titled Darkstalkers, actually aired in the fall of 1995, well before the anime was actually established. To its defense, it was based solely on the first two arcade games that had just came out, not the OVAs, because they didn't exist yet. Imagine creating a whole children's TV show based off of a quirky fighting game you just found out about at the local arcade. Well, I guess it was more acceptable in the 90s, as this was a big decade for Western animation. Cartoons were being produced left and right, whether they were good or not. You had stuff like Ren and Stimpy come out of the woodwork. This era produced the successful X-Men animated series, which went on from 1992 to 1997. The music was composed by the same man who scored the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers music, so it had that same energy. The X-Men animation pretty much set the bar for all action cartoons of that era. You also had shows like Mummies Alive and Gargoyles. It seems that cartoons about mutants and heroic monsters really hit with the youth. I know what it did for me. Those are some of my favorite types of shows. 
So after seeing how successful the X-Men cartoon was, it's easy to understand why something like Darkstalkers would be created. The superhero versus supervillain thing was really popping back then and Darkstalkers was just a way to kind of ride that wave. Capcom's licensing team really wanted the show to help Darkstalkers take off in the States with the kids. And they wanted to chase the type of success that Ghostbusters had in the 80s. So the show was produced by the same company that gave us the X-Men show, along with the Tick cartoon and the Street Fighter cartoon. They go by Graz Entertainment, and they often co-collaborated with other companies to help promote merchandise. They haven't made a show since the 90s, but they still own licensing to a few of their shows. Graz Entertainment's shows have a similar animation style, but there were definitely levels to their quality here. Going back to the Darkstalkers US TV show, they just went for a basic good versus evil plot and didn't bother with the actual backstory or lore that it had. Again, they made this from an arcade game that they probably played for only 30 minutes before their mothers told them to come home. Some dork, some normal looking kid is thrown into the mix of these supernatural characters and helps to give it a magic school bus episode gone wrong type of vibe. Well, well, <laughs> what have we here? An inept little boy wizard? <laughs> oh my, I hope you weren't planning on growing up. <laughs> it was, of course, received very negatively and trashed for being below video game adaptation standards and even animation standards. Now, I don't wanna knock the USA version too much here because it was a product of its time and it was just riding the coattails of the X-Men cartoon. It was also giving me a, uh, a certain entertainment factor that the anime actually was not giving me. You think that Catwoman in a bad wig is your queen? You're loonier than I said! So, I mean, I can't knock it too much. Clearly, this was a cash grab and a sad attempt on Capcom's part to make Darkstalkers a thing in the States. I guess Capcom figured it worked with Street Fighter. Why wouldn't it work with Darkstalkers? American cartoons are best off just adapting stories already made with the American culture in mind. It can't just be a coincidence how the X-Men cartoon, The Tick, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles does so well in the States. These were all American made comics and an understanding in backstory and setting was there from the beginning of its conception. You try to adapt something from overseas and something is surely to get misinterpreted or mishandled. As America does a great job adapting their own properties, they still can't help but copycat a good idea from another country. For instance, the Mortal Kombat series was created in America, but they've also decided to make their own terrible version of Street Fighter. There was this parody fighting series called Clay Fighter for the uh, Super Nintendo and N64 generation that has since been completely forgotten about. So although sometimes successful, it is very hard for America to make their own version of something that's popular in a different country. Trying to reinterpret a popular form of media from Japan for American viewers has always been a bad idea. It's always better to just wait on Japan and make their own adaptation and have it licensed for American use to make English voiceovers for. Starting in the 2000s, it seems American production studios finally caught on to this and we began to see more licensing for overseas content like anime. However, during the 2000s, a lot of these shows would be completely re-edited for a kid-friendly American palette and it ended up having some pretty cringy results. And now, the stars of four kids will sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by... It's widely known that the former licensing company, 4Kids Entertainment, would re-edit anime and dub them in a way that would change the whole vibe of what the show was about. That was still better and probably a lot cheaper than creating a whole new Saturday morning adaptation, although it was still problematic. Japanese gaming companies like Capcom have continued over time to make the best fighting games, horror games, and video game characters in general. And the world has learned to just let the masters work and to try to take a piece of the pie after it's done being baked. These days, the most a production company will do is buy the rights to an awesome overseas show 
and get professional English dubbing on it with little to no extra edits to the original. This is all it takes to reach the English speaking audience. And this is how all media should be shared in its original format with nothing changed other than the language. It's just that entertainment companies tended to be greedy and think that their audiences wouldn't notice the real from the fake. They've been doing this since the British invasion in the 60s. Remember when America produced all those dollar store versions of the Beatles? Some of them were okay, but still, the, the reasoning for it was very chaotic and bandwagonish. But we're post 2020 at this point, and anything can be exposed for its lack of authenticity. So everyone's good at something. Korea has pop stars, Japan has technology, America has comic book superheroes. <laughs> but ideas and properties are not like Spider-Man variants. It's all Spider-Man, they just look different. No. If a respectable reimagining or adaptation can't be done, just don't even attempt it. Buy the original like everyone else. Don't be a greedy corporation and history will thank you. Duh. If you enjoy learning about nostalgic stuff that doesn't get talked about enough, go ahead and subscribe to RetroSick and like our videos and have a decent Halloween. So I'll see you next time in November.